Welcome to Section 420, Talking Yankees. Well, this baseball season will have the designated hitter in both leagues, so who more fitting to be a guest on this episode than the first designated hitter in Major League history and former Yankee, Ron Bloomberg. You can read about Ron in his career in his first book, Designated Hebrew, The Ron Bloomberg Story, and next year he's coming out with a second book, Thurman and Me, about his relationship on and off the field with the former Yankee captain, Thurman Munson, which is set to be released in March 2021. Now, we have Ron in this episode, and, you know, we're living in the world now of, you know, great communication and all these great things with, uh, you know, smartphones and video conferencing, all of that. But we need a little assistance here, so we're going to go a little old school on this one. We're going to get a little help from the flip phone. So let's get right into it. Hi, Ron. Thanks for coming to the show. James, it's great to be able to talk to you and in this hard time. And we are having a little bit uh, technical difficulty, but you expect that in this in this day and age right now. But this is fun for you. I'm having fun. Now, me too. I think I always feel like I'm the only person in the world with a flip phone. So now that you have a flip phone, I, I just think that's like uh, it's amazing. You know, I, like in the year you know 2020, everyone's got these high tech things, and then you want flip phones. Um, you know, that's just like a, a dream come true. I couldn't even you know think of that. Oh, you have to worry about that because this is what I usually do is I buy about eight or nine different uh, buy eight or nine flip phones because I'll wind up losing one a month. And these are very, very simple. I'm a very simpleton when it comes to technology. And this is great. I can see you and you got your beautiful flip phone. I got mine. They match and we're going to have a great interview. Excellent. Um, so, you know, uh, one of the reasons that you know, I re really love to have you on this time is now with this new baseball season, of course, one of the big new rules is that now you'll have the DH in both leagues. And um, one of your great claims of fame, of course, is being the first major league player uh, to be a DH. So just, you know, just take that in for a moment where now we have the DH in both leagues right now. Like, how does that make you feel? Oh, I mean, I, hey, it's taken, hey, taken me 48 years at 48 uh, uh, years of interviews with hundreds of different uh, uh, radio stations across the country and TV stations across the country. I finally became a, 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 a real whole person. Uh, Edgar Martinez became uh, uh, the Hall of Famer in Cooperstown this year. And now, it's the universal DH, but they had to have it. To be honest with you, the DH is a wonderful rule. I don't know if you like it or not. 50% of the people love it. 50% of the people hate it. And that's why it's been so good. And I, the DH has been so good to me because, number one, it has created a lot of uh, opportunities for me. Plus, it's created a lot of opportunities for older ball players like a – Derek Jeter, who was in his last years, or Reggie Jackson, or David Ortiz, who, of course, has been a DH his whole career. But it's wonderful. It's great. And it's here to stay. Hopefully, if the uh, Baseball Association and if the Players Association will uh, uh, approve it and the National League will approve it. But I think it will. Yeah, and I, I'm on the same boat. I do like the DH. You know, I understand you got the National League fans that you know, like the old school rules. But like we said, you know, we're missing out a lot of great hitters by not having that rule. So, yeah, like the David Ortiz's and Edgar Martinez of the world. Or just gives an opportunity for some, like you said, Jeter to maybe, um, you know, get a few days off his feet for a while. But still, you know, let Yankee fans see him and enjoy him. So, I'm um, totally on board. I don't care maybe the year after this if they want to go back to before where it's AL, DH, and NL has that. But, uh, but I'm telling you about it. I would always – I'm more pro-DH than um, anti-DH. Let's, let's just go uh, uh, you know, right to the beginning. Um, you're born in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, now, growing yes. up, I mean, you know, were you uh, – what, what, what team – you know, what, what fan were you of, of what team and maybe what players did you like to maybe emulate or, or copy, or which, you know, I could be like him. Like, who was your heroes growing up? Well, to be honest with you, Atlanta, Georgia, when I was growing up, was not a big baseball town. Of course, you know, you got college football down here. That's the number one. Uh, you got the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, you got the Alabama. You got the Roll Tide Roll. You got the South Carolinas, you got the Tennessees, you got the great college football teams down here. 
Uh, when I was growing up, they had minor league teams. Uh, they had what they called the Atlanta Crackers, who was a double-A team. And then all of a sudden, when I became a senior in high school, the Milwaukee Braves came to Atlanta, became the Atlanta Braves. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, when I used to watch the games of the week with Pee Wee Reese and uh, Dizzy Dean back before you, and we used to watch great baseball. And my favorite, my favorite team was the Yankees, to be honest with you. But my favorite ball player was only Mickey Mantle. And I mean, he was he was he was my star, to be honest with you. And uh, uh, to be able to meet him when I signed with the Yankees in '67, uh, I was very lucky to be the number one draft choice in the country by the Yankees. Uh, they flew me up, parents up to New York. And I had an opportunity to dress in his locker. And after his career was over with, uh, we became very, very close friends. I used to play in his golf tournament every year. And uh, he was a wonderful man. I loved him. And it's, it was great to be able to be able to play with the Yankees, where it was my favorite team, but to be great friends with Mickey Mantle. So I lived a fantasy, and it was a wonderful life that I, I did live. It's funny, I was actually going to ask you about that, um, you know, getting drafted by the Yankees, uh, you know, and then, you know, be able to like rub elbows with someone like a Mickey Mantle or even like some of the old timers days where someone like Joe D comes back and get to see Yogi and Whitey. Like, how is that whole experience like just seeing these like, you know, I guess, as you said, if you grew up a Yankee fan, now like your idols and you're kind of not rubbing elbows with them. Well, let me tell you something. When you're 17 years old, when you get drafted by the Yankees and then you get uh, uh, they send you up there to sign your contract. And I've never been up to New York before, of course, and and be able to go to Yankee Stadium and to go take batting practice. And at that time, it was Yogi and Whitey Ford and uh, all those guys. And, of course, uh, I was very, very lucky in my career that I got to meet uh, Joe D. Uh, he used to, uh, at Old Timers Day, when I played, and when he participated in Old Timers Day at Yankee Stadium, uh, he – was in my locker. He took my locker with me. We were locker mates. And he took my shoes and uh, he wore them. He took my glove. He used my glove. And we became very, very good friends also. Uh, so I was very lucky in my life that uh, uh, I met a lot of wonderful, wonderful, uh, great baseball players. But they were so nice to me. They're, you know, I mean, when people were talking about, well, he's not nice or he's not nice. But let me tell you something. I haven't met too many uh, not nice uh, athletes before, to be honest with you. And but to be able to to be up and to uh, uh, be in the same uh, locker room with a Joe D or a Mickey Mantle or a Yogi Berra or Whitey Ford or Bill Dickey or Moose and Hank Bauer or, you know, Moose Skyron, those guys. I mean, it's it's it, you know, you you live a dream. And I did. And I was very, very lucky because now, now, uh, when I go to Old Thomas Day, unfortunately, we don't have Old Thomas Day this year because of the uh, uh, disease. OK, so uh, it was supposed to be August the 9th. Of course, they uh, no no uh, live baseball at the stadium with fans. So it's this is the first year in a long time that I have not participated. But going back to Yankee Stadium, and you get the uh, new Yankees because when I hey when I played baseball, I was a new Yankees to these guys, and now these are new Yankees to uh, me. And uh, I, I meet a, a Gary Sanchez or a CC who retired, of course, or Aaron Judge. Uh, all those guys are they just wonderful. The Yankees are the greatest organization in the world. The Yankees made sure, George Steinbrenner made sure that he gets the right guys on the team. He makes sure that these guys are very well polite to, with family, to be honest with you. There's just so many baseball players and just so many Yankees that wore the Yankee pinstripe. But when you wear that Yankee pinstripe, you are a family. They are taught to take care of the family. So we go down to the clubhouse. Uh, they're wonderful to us. Uh, it's just like, you know, unfortunately, now I'm 72 years old and these guys are just little babies now, to be honest with you. And and I was I was there uh, uh, many, many years ago. And I'm hey. 
you see me now it's it came back on i'm sorry but technical yeah but it's it's wonderful to uh uh to uh to meet these guys and they're great to us and you know and uh when i played uh, uh with the yankees and uh when i came back uh to my first old timers day uh my uh, locker was Derek Jeter's locker. So they had me uh, getting dressed uh, next to Derek Jeter. So it was wonderful from uh, uh, looking when I, when I played, you know, I had some good years in New York and uh, I uh, sat down with the superstar and we became good friends too, Derek and I. So it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to, to meet all these guys. And, and like I said before, to be able to put the Yankee pinstripes on. Now, I just want to let you know that as a fan, I went to a few of those old time games to see you and you would probably get, you know, some of the biggest applause. I don't know, just your name or just, uh, you know, the boomer nickname or whatever it might be. Uh, but yeah, you would always get some of the loudest cheers just from all the different old time player names, you know, players that they would name at some of those games. I appreciate that. The good part about it is, you know, I had a, Jew a lot of Jewish fans. So that was, uh, so I had a lot of, uh, uh, people in the stands. So uh, I, I made a lot of fans in New York and, and they took care of me and, and uh, they're my family. Uh, the fans, I, I tell people, the fans are the ones that are hero of the game. I'm just a guy that lived a fantasy. They get to put, got to put on my uniform and got to play baseball at Yankee Stadium. But you, uh, and when y'all went to games and you cheered whoever you wanted to cheer for, but it's wonderful to come back to New York and to be well received by the people in New York and what they did for me and what they did for me now. And when I got on Facebook, social media for the first time, I never done this before. And like I said, I'm not technical. I still got you and I, our flip phone. Plus I got my rotary phone at home. Plus I got my calculator that I use. And everybody always had to tell me how to do this uh, computer business. So I was afraid of it. It's easier hit. It's easier for me to hit a hundred mile an hour fastball than for me to talk to you now, because I have no idea even if you hear me or not. I see you. I see you smiling. And I don't know if you see me or whatever. I don't even know how they do all this stuff. But anyway, it's uh, uh, they got me on this stuff uh, for the last two months. And um, I got to, I got over 10,000 fans now, and it's been fun to reach out to my fans, to meet, reach new fans, and to listen to all the uh, 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 the cheers and also the, some complaints where I didn't do this, I didn't do that. But it's wonderful. It's great to listen and to be with all the fans again. Uh, that's awesome. Because yeah, that you know, I did um, connect with you on Twitter because you know, and I saw you were were tweeting and. Um, yeah, it's just a, a new avenue, and it's just great to, you know, touch base with a, a baseball player like yourself, where 10 years ago, you know, that didn't really exist, and well, there was a kind of a, a wall there. But now, with the internet and, uh, you know, the, the ability now, you can reach out to players of past and present, and I think it's just good for the game, you know, it helps sell the game better, and it helps fans just interact with players, and it's just, you know, it's a good thing for baseball. You know what? The good part about it is I, I just had a book. Uh, I, I just had a book. Well, in 2007, I wrote a book called The Designated Hebrew. And now it came back in paperback about uh, six weeks ago. And on Facebook, I've already sold over like 300 uh, copies of the book. And uh, it's fun. You know, I, I put it up on Facebook. Uh, they buy it. Uh, they love it. It was a two, uh, 25. Uh, uh, it was a top 25 New York bestseller in 2007. And it's been fun with it. And also, I got another book that's coming out in March. Uh, Thurman Munson was my roommate for five years. It's called The Captain and Me On and Off the Field with Thurman Munson. So, I mean, that's going to be a great book, too. It comes out on March of next year. And so this has been fun because, number one, I mean, y'all had it real bad up the Northeast uh, before we did. Georgia is terrible now. Florida is terrible now. So, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it looks like this thing is just going from state to state to state to state. And it's a horrible thing. It got 42 million people out of work. And, but I always tell people, we're going to get out of this. We're going to make it a lot better. 
It's going to be fun. Baseball's coming back this week, hopefully, and I hope it's pretty good baseball. Uh, now I'm waiting for college football. We don't even know if college football is going to even be this this year. So I'm really depressed about that. But hey, but we're all alive, and we're all baseball fans. You're a baseball fan. I'm a baseball fan. I'm a baseball player, and I know these guys, and I know what they're going through. And if this is not an easy situation, but this makes you a lot stronger and it's going to make the game a lot better. Now, let's just say putting yourself, you know, as a baseball player, you know, put yourself in the, the shoes of today's players, just with all the stuff that's going on. Would you want to play this season or would you say, hey, look, it could be a little risky. I want to sit this year out. Like, you know, given everything you know, how would you handle this season? Oh, this is very simple. When we played, we played for hundreds of dollars a bill. Uh, we played for nothing. Because in 73, uh, James, I hit uh, uh, 329, and they gave me a $500 raise. Next year, I hit 311. They took my $500 back. Okay? If we had this thing, we had to play this because, number one, we had one-year contract. These guys already got $100 million in the bank. So they don't have to play this year. They can play any time they want to, to be honest with you. So it's a lot different uh, when we played, uh, when I played. You know, I mean, it's, that's a hard situation. You know, I mean, you have to look at this because now 42 million people out of work. They got to get back to work. They got to do something. If not, this whole country and this whole world is going to dry up. Uh, it's not an easy situation, do you? Go play baseball or you don't play baseball or do you go back to work or you don't go back to work. I, it's a no win situation. I mean, I don't know uh, if I would say both of my kids are doctors and and I think uh, three months ago it's a lot different than what it was now. I think even though they don't have the vaccine now, they know how to treat it a little bit better. Uh, uh, being young, and I know that you, the death rate is awful. You know, I know it is. It's terrible. Anybody that passes away is awful. But people like myself, uh, the older people, uh, has more of a problem than the younger people. So the baseball players are young. Uh, a lot of them are getting the virus but they don't get the uh, uh it's it doesn't stay long time with these uh, uh the, the guys uh with the older people they go on ventilations and you know and that's the tough part about it but the younger ones uh i know with the atlanta braves they just had uh uh, uh freddie friedman who uh contracted the virus he was uh, out of baseball for about six days he came back and he's in the ball real well DJ LeMayhew uh, contracted the virus. Uh, he's back now. So they're back after six or seven days. The older people is taking longer. So, I mean, if I was them, I would play. Gotcha. Now, I would. I would. Now, again, fans could uh, check out your first book, you know, Designated Hebrew, The Ron Bloomberg Story. Go over to more your career, but maybe let's go over to some of the highlights in terms of, you know, going back to 1973, April 6th. That's the game, of course, where you play at Fenway Park and you're going to be, you know, the first DH ever. So just before the season started, that game started, like, how do you guys think about this, you know, new rule DH? Like, you know, how are you talking about it? Or is this like, you know? Nah, because we thought it was, a, it, it was called at first the designated pinch hitter. Nobody had any idea what the designated hitter was. You know, we thought it was a joke, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, we're down in spring training. Everybody wanted to hit for the pitchers. And the pitchers always wanted to hit. And uh, But we always, uh, everybody got to be a DH. But I was never a DH because I was playing first base. But four days before we were supposed to break camp, I pulled a hamstring muscle. And when I pulled a hamstring muscle, uh, Ralph Houck, Elston Howard, and uh, Dick Hauser came up to me on the flight back up to Boston. And, of course, I didn't want to go on the disabled list. If I went on the disabled list, I didn't want to be like a Wally Pipp and uh, uh, Lou Gehrig. Uh, of course, Lou Gehrig to Wally Pipp's place, and he never came back. And, you know, if we get sent down to the minor leagues, we're going to 
if we came back on a one-year contract, you know, we'll never come back to the big leagues, to be honest with you. Now, to be honest with you, um, it's, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's, it's a great thing. You know, when I was a DH, when they put me on the lineup card up in Boston, I had no idea what it was. And I tell people I screwed up the game of baseball in 73, but I changed the game of baseball. It changed the whole uh, 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 era of the game of baseball. Uh, I think it's great uh, watching uh, David Ortiz, Diego Martinez, uh, now Aaron Judge, uh, uh, if he's injured a little bit or Sanchez injured a little bit or uh, uh, Stanton's injured a little bit, they could be the D8. So it's a position where, fan, well, I don't know if fans are going to go out and watch it, but they can watch it on TV. He has a position that he could go out and play. I hate to watch the pitchers hit because that's a waste of time. The, you know, I mean, 98% of pitchers cannot hit. Uh, they can't even bunt now. So the game has totally changed. It's not a game of strategy anymore. It's a game of runs. It's a game of home runs or strikeouts. It's not like the Billy Martin uh, small ball game. It's not the Joe Madden. Joe Madden, of course, is in, I think, the Dodgers now. He was in, uh, uh, where was he? Uh, uh, he was with the Cubs, uh, and now he's with Anaheim. Yeah, he was with the Cubs. I'm sorry, he was with the Cubbies, okay? And uh, uh, he loves the small ball. He likes to go from first to third, steal bases. That's baseball. It's going to eventually go back. But people love to see how far, you know, Aaron Judge and uh, all these guys are going to hit home runs. And, uh, hey, it's fun to the fans to do that. But, you know, it's, it's, it's hard for the ball players because ball players want to play first to third. They want to hit the ball gap to gap. But you, all, you got all these guys hitting 20, 30, 40 runs a year, and they strike out 200 times. So it's a total different game of baseball for when we played it. It's, it's, it's not how, you know, it's how, how many runs you score. That's how you win the ball games. It's not how many home runs. You know, they, eventually they might do that. You hit five home runs and the other teams hit three, you win the ball game. They're not going to worry about the runs. But uh, uh, it's still a great game, and hopefully it will go back to the game that it used to be when that a double day started the game. Exactly. And a lot of fans might not know. I mean, you know, you're a 293 career hitter, 304 runners in scoring position, which again, back in the Billy Martin days was very important, especially to Billy Martin, as well as a 325 hitter with, two, with, the, with the game uh, tied. So, um, you know, get, making contact when it's crucial, you know, again, that, and back then that was very important. Now, again, it's all about uppercutting the swing a little bit, hitting a home run. And again, the game is just totally different now than compared to 30, 40 years ago. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the funny part about it is uh, if I hit 304 nowadays, uh, I wouldn't be uh, I'll be uh, talking to the Mets, probably trying to buy the team, <laughs> you know, because the Mets are, you know, uh, you know, I mean, for sale. Look at A-Rod. I mean, they got three hundred million dollars in the bank. You know, I mean, these guys, the people don't realize that George Steinbrenner bought the team for nine point three million dollars. And he's and and. And now it's worth like $5.4 billion. And, you know, uh, uh, Derek Jeter made a lot of money, of course. All these guys make a lot of money. You know, mo all these guys, when they play and when they reach the big leagues and when they get the rookie uh, uh, contract, they make more money than I did for almost 10 years up in the big leagues. So, I mean, the game has changed an awful lot, but I would not take anything away from when we played the game of baseball, when we played, it was the best because we made so many friends. Uh, we had to go out to dinner with each other. We did things with each other. It's not, we don't have a, 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 a posse that follows us around. Uh, we don't have the Lamborghinis and the Maseratis and the Aston Martins. Uh, we're not living in uh, the Trump Plaza where it's uh, uh, $40 million to buy something. We're just trying to find a place for $300 a month and it'll go to the ballpark and play baseball. But we had a wonderful time. The game of baseball is wonderful and I loved it. Now, um, 
while you were a Yankee, um, you know, you obviously, um, you know, obviously the fans loved you, especially the Jewish community. And now, did you reside in Riverdale at the time? I did, yes. I, I lived in the city for a little while. Uh, Thurman and I lived up in Purchase for a little while and also in uh, 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 Ridgewood and Paramus we lived. But then I finally got a place up in Riverdale, 232nd, Henry Hudson Parkway, the Whitehall building, and the big uh, uh, the big Met guy that came over from the Giants, Willie Mays, had the penthouse, and I was on the second floor. So I always took uh, uh, a second to Willie Mays. But that's okay. We became very, very close, and I used to take him down to all the dailies and stuff in New York and, you know, and introduce him to the matzo balls and the – pastrami's and the corned beefs and the half sours. So he's very, very happy. He loved me for that. Now let's probably get to the final question. In New York, who has the best corned beef and pastrami? Well, I could tell you the, the, the best deli, what Thurman and I and everybody used to go to was the stage deli. But of course, they're not even open anymore. And everybody would say the Carnegie. They're not even open anymore. To be honest with you, it's really hard to find a deli in New York City. And then I used to go for the last couple of years called Artie's. They're not even around. Everybody told me to go, go to Katz's. No, you know, but I went to a kosher place that was very good on Park Avenue about five years ago called Mindy's. It was kosher. It was excellent. But, uh, uh, but when we go there for Old Timers Day, it's very, very difficult because when we stay at the Sheraton, right across the street was a stage deli. And of course, they had a sandwich named after me, so it was wonderful. Corned beef, pastrami, and what I didn't like was chopped liver. So I didn't like that. But one thing I wanna say is, fans, whoever watches this show, you need to get my book. It's a great book. And you gotta go to my website. I'm gonna tell you, it's Ron Bloomberg. It's 1-0. It's not like the mayor. It's ronbloombergyankees.com. You'll love the book. It's great. It's a great read. You know, James is the best. I appreciate that, Ron. And thank you for coming on to the show.